Hello everyone, Harry Bulldog here, editor at Total Telecom. Telecoms has always been a global industry. With the rise of the IoT and machine-to-machine -machine communication, cross-border connectivity is now more important than ever. I'm delighted today to be joined by Ong Yok Chui, CEO of the Bridge Alliance, and Lazaro Fernandez, GM of the Freemove Alliance, two organizations that play a key role in facilitating seamless global connectivity. Thank you both for joining me. Before we go any further, for those of us who aren't familiar with the Bridge Alliance and the Free Move Alliance, please can you tell us a little bit more about yourselves and, and introduce your organizations? Uh, Gio, perhaps you could start. So Bridge Alliance is an alliance of 34 premier mobile operators and uh, we cover Asia, Middle East as well as Africa. So uh, Bridge Alliance itself was established back in 2004 starting with roaming business, and now it covers uh, internet of things, enterprise mobility, 5G of course, right, which is the future of telco. So really what we do is to bring together the telco members that we have across the world to really look at how we can leverage on collective uh, scale to really drive value you know, back to the telco as well as to their customers. And Lazarus? Oh, Freemove. Well, you know, Freemove was founded in 2003, you know, by, you know, it's almost already 20 years ago. I always say Freemove is a startup of 20 years, you know, um, and it was created in that moment where for members, uh, you know, it was created a long time ago. And in, since 2006, the four members that are uh, our main, you know, uh, supporters in this relation are the leading operators uh, worldwide and in Europe. They are the best network operators. So it is uh, Deutsche Telekom, Orange Group, Telia Company and Telecom Italia. And with them, we are basically focused in Europe and also now in North America and a bit in Africa, a bit in Africa and, and, and APAC globally. Uh, our mission is to promote the power of uh, global mobility by enabling the collaboration between the multinational companies and the national operators, you know. And, and you know, we are now launching a marketing campaign and we are a little bit, you know, positioning Freemove in a way that we are explaining Freemove with a rope, you know. A rope is like our metaphor that we're using, you know. Basically, it is representing a lot of the Freemove's attributes is that together, we build better solutions for our customers. We are united. We have the, the, you know, the different lines of the rope. We are stronger. We are efficient. The rope is something that holds you and also pulls you and supports you. And is connecting you know, everybody and helping you to anchor and to reach the summit. This is our, our main uh, you know, uh, uh, translation of this mission. We have a very... I would say powerful value proposition. Basically, what we do is that we are the alliance that is composed as a mobile services hub that helps the top 400 multinationals present in Europe, not only the top 400, but this is our main focus. We help them to optimize their investment in mobile connectivity because we offer to them global access to the best and most reliable networks through a single point of management. You know, we are in a footprint of around 100 countries, you know, uh, most of them through our members, uh, local companies that are uh, Africa, uh, Europe, uh, US, and the rest we do it through partners. And we have very strong uh, partnership network like Swisscom in Switzerland, Turkcell in Turkey, Megathon in Russia, Air in Ireland, Norsh in Portugal, so that we cover worldwide. And of course, one of our you know, uh, golden partners is, is, of course, is the Bridge Alliance that gives us access to, to APAC and also technologically uh, support. You've touched on this question a little bit with your answer there, Lazaro, but I'd like to ask you both to share a little bit more about how the two alliances are set up and the relationship between the two. Uh, I think that'd be really interesting. Gjok, perhaps you can go first again. So, um... I think we are we are pretty similar, right? Between Free Move and Bridge Alliance, essentially set up to enable the collaboration across different regions. So uh, the relationship between Free Move and Bridge, I think, is a very valuable one. For telcos, a lot of our telco members they are very strong in their own home market. So there lies opportunity when telcos can come together and focus on how we can deliver common values and uh, 
uh, areas of collaboration that can strengthen the value proposition that we bring to our customer, right? So for example, for Bridge, one area that we focus on is uh, Internet of Things, right? Which uh, we are very well positioned as the gateway to Asia, where MNCs will wanted to roll out connected products, say connected car in Asia. Uh, again, is the value proposition of having a single point of contact, ease of doing business in this part of the world, because uh, they don't have to figure out the complexity of different markets, regulatory, uh, even different languages and culture in Asia. So our relationship with uh, Free Move, I think really also help us to strengthen the coverage across the globe. We are very strong in Asia and through Free Move, uh, we can then enable our customer to have uh, seamless uh, deployment into Europe, right? So likewise, uh, we provide that uh, support to free move as their customer wants to come to Asia uh, through this relationship, again, removing all the friction that they might face if you, they were to come to this part of the world. So that's really an, a very important area. So in our relationship and what we have been working together, uh, the focus is always in the, has been very strong in the area of enterprise mobility. So enterprise mobility where again, it's not just about providing connectivity to our customer. It's more than that, right? The support, the, uh, the kind of uh, uh, telco span analysis and more than that, which is where we find the relationship uh, between Bridge and Free Move uh, a valuable one. And Lazaro, from your perspective? The way we are set up is, uh, is very, uh, is, is, in certain ways, is very similar. Um, as I mentioned, uh, FreeMove uh, is uh, a commercial driven hard entity, you know, we are, you know, I always comment this, this thing, you know, in, by difference to other big chunks of countries or, or big spaces, economical spaces, our continent, Europe has, I was reading recently, something like 790 national operators, including the, the, the MVNOs for the population of uh, 300 and something million people. If you deduct the MVNOs, then you arrive to around 360 national network operators for a population of 300 and something people, a million. So that means one operator per million people. And I know that this is a joke and this should be compared like this, but if you look to other economical RS spaces like this, it could be you know the US or, or China, or other uh, countries, big populated countries in APAC, we, we need to cooperate. So this is in our DNA. What we do is that we try to make simple the access to the multinational customers to you know, our enterprise mobility services. Our model is a lead operator model. So I don't sell free milk. It's not in my interest. It's, uh, what I do is that I, I enable and I reinforce the position of the Deutsche Telekom, the Orange, the Telias, the Telecom Italias, the, the Swisscom, the Tuxels. And through FreeMove, they are able to work together and get the right support to access to all the footprint. Our motto is always customer first, in the sense that we are, you know, orchestrating the relationship. We are supporting our members to orchestrate the, you know, this process, the relation all the business processes, all the content, all the information for RFIs, RFPs from the beginning until the end and then to the delivery. Uh, we are organized on a, you know, like a company. So we are an alliance, but we are organized as a company. You can imagine we have a service center uh, that is providing services to the members with a good number of uh, John talented people. We have a business service that is taking care of, you know, as, as Chiqui said, uh, you know, central reporting, telecom expense management, uh, ordering, uh, service management, which is another, you know, another service center. So we have some internal capacities to support our members. And then we organize as a company, we have our sales direction, we have a marketing, we have our operations, we have our customer service, etc. cetera. Um, we are what we are thanks to our members and partners. And what we are doing is that we are grabbing those experts that they are co you know, participating into different working groups with the different specialities. And then we, we, you know, we are like a community 
of around you know 500 people the sales the marketing etc that are working together to sell to the multinationals and that is key uh, uh, in the terms of the partnership that as, as you know as uh, as chi chi or chi mentioned sorry because my spelling is that you know it is key for us this partnership as the one we have with bridge because our customers they want to have hey I need someone that helps me to sort, you know, and to coordinate and to perhaps not to centralize, but just the support because I am going to open a factory uh, somewhere in, in APAC or I'm just having some a smaller fleet in Singapore. And you know what? I would like to see how we can have more information. So we are making the bridge with bridge, you know, we are connecting free myth and bridge with a nice rope that, you know, we have a setup of working, we have a common go to market, we have the right contacts. And of course, we coordinate not to lose the power of the locals, because we are a global entity, but we are nothing without the support of the local entities. And that is wonderful how it works thanks to Bridge. We have been working since many years. And of course, the, this is a, a very enriching relation that it goes beyond the commercial part because we also do a lot of sharings on technology, on the 5G, et cetera, because this is really bringing the best to our customers. I, I really like uh, how you explain it, right, Lazaro? And I think it explains also why the partnership between free move and bridge has worked so well because uh, there are so many commonalities right in terms of uh, how we operate so similarly for bridge uh, we are a company we are actually set up by our shareholders 10 telcos who started bridge each own 10 percent of bridge right so bridge is set up as a private limited uh, about 40 over people in singapore but we operate regionally and a very similar setup like uh, free move, uh, we actually would become actually the platform that pull our member operators together to cross share, right, learnings. And more importantly, to look at areas where it matters for everybody to come together to uh, drive a common vision and deliver the value to our enterprise customer. So that is uh, important because uh, while we look at connectivity, it seems simple. But actually, when you are familiar with the deployment and the implementation of projects, it's not that straightforward, right? So in uh, Asia, especially because of the differing culture, languages, and maturity of the market, a lot of time enterprises would find challenges coming into this part of the world and implementing whether enterprise mobility, IoT or more. So that is where Bridge Alliance has also delivered value by uh, putting together a platform not only for cross-sharing, but also we become the center of excellence in terms of understanding regulatory framework, what can or cannot be done in each of our members' operators' market. And like what uh, Lazaro was saying, is really the strong in-country support because the telcos are there, right? While having that regional or global view of how things can stitch, be stitched together, right? And provide that... Uh, seamless experience for our enterprise customers. You've mentioned some of the many challenges there from the sheer number of operators you have to deal with to the cultural and language barriers. In the last couple of years with the coronavirus pandemic, has that had a major impact on how you both operate? Definitely. In any business or any uh, area or any industry, I, I'm sure no, we probably face the same kind of issue as in because of uh, pandemic, we are not able to travel. Right, nothing beats coming face to face. It's always a lot more productive in uh, discussing in the same room and driving the common uh, goal together in the same fiscal space. But of course, with technology and uh, being in the telco world, you know, we're happy that uh, all this connect connectivity is working well most of the time. Right? <laughs> and uh, that helps. Uh, so virtually, we have also bring people together and during these last two years when we cannot travel, uh, it does also open up opportunities. When we bring our event online, so for Bridge, we actually have a yearly flagship event where we bring the leaders together physically in the past. And when pandemic hits, it, it all goes virtually online. But that, again, 
provides an opportunity where we open up the platform to more people to join us. So when you fly people into one country, not everybody can bring the whole team together. But when they are virtually online, it's very low cost, right? So everybody can come together. And uh, we have also started a series of uh, sharing on the 5G area where a lot of our member, including their teammates within the organization, can then join in a conversation. So that conversation becomes vibrant because of online platform, but we do miss that physical interaction. So that, that part cannot be replaced by technology. And Lazaro, did you have similar experiences in Europe? In our case, um, for us, it was really, uh, you know, the pandemic was, in our way of working, it was not affecting so much, let's be clear, because we are uh, a very much uh, digitalized entity, you know. For us, it was really an opportunity uh, for many reasons. The first one was uh, because we were providing to our customers and coordinating to our customers the responses from our different local operators and members to the pandemic. So we were proactively contacting all the you know, top 400 customers. We, we are very, very well extended into the uh, MNC's uh, market in Europe and, and not only in Europe. And we were coordinating this response. So we were taking and going to our own you know, communication in our channels, digital channels, saying what were the responses for the data allowance? What was happening in Spain? What was happening in Italy? What was happening in Germany, in the US? And we were given this and, and, and then customers were realizing like, well, th this is a value added because I don't need to worry. You know, there is someone taking care of it. Uh, I think the second element was as, as uh, you know, as uh, Bridge uh, was mentioning, you know, GHV, is that we were obviously uh, moving into hybrid mode, many of our meetings. Our customer advisory board that was normally happened in, in lovely Paris, we had to move it to an online. And the first thing we did was to, you know, let's forget about the business right now, the strategy. Let's take the COVID. So we had experts with our customers talking about the future after COVID. How are the companies going to get into this? Um, another impact that we saw was obviously our yearly event. We had to move it to a virtual mode. And so it was a, on a rush, but this was an opportunity because we moved from and normally 150 people on site, we move it to 600 people online. It's not the same, but it was very well valued at the same time. And I think that there is a last topic that, you know, this has helped us to put our feet even more into the shoulders, you know, into the shoes of our customers. What we saw was that we started having conversations with our customers because you know, as McKinsey said presently, one of these reports is uh, there has been an, you know, advancement of the digitalization of the companies of around five to seven years in Europe. So it means that what we were expecting to happen in five to seven years is happening now. And then this was bringing a lot of opportunities to discuss with customers of how we can support them because we are a virtual organization, digital, then we were showing the way we do it. And also we were, you know, uh, seeing that many customers were, you know, trying to postpone their decisions a little bit, you know, uh, and that meant that we needed to have conversations, how we can manage, it was very valuable for us. So let's say we had a very good result these last few years. And the last topic I will comment is that I believe customers, you know, I was reading another report from, from, uh, you know, from uh, a computing uh, uh, association, very important, that is Compute, I think, uh, is around, you know, the customers have been for around two years in a bunker, in some extent. Everybody has been trying to do what you have to do to maintain activity. In our point of view, there is going to be an increase. What we see is that there is an increase on the expected budgets into the IT, you know, our point of view is that we really want to support the customers to be able to do the things that they perhaps they put into the fridge for, you know, six months, seven months, and because we were creating the ways to support their migrations with good service management. And the most interesting, 
we are able to do everything on a very much hybrid mode. So yes, I think that we, we got better thanks to COVID, unfortunately about the COVID, but we got better. It was, for us, it was good uh, that we were able to deliver to the society what we were doing. I think it's an interesting point that uh, Lazaro has uh, pointed up about the digitalization. So in the last two years, because of pandemic, all of us know that uh, it has uh, really accelerated the digital transformation of enterprises. All the more they know that they can't just rely on traditional channel of reaching out to consumers or engaging with their customers uh, in the old way. So they have no choice but to do digital. So uh, actually over the last uh, 18 months, Bridge has launched our communication platform as a service. So we have provide that as a platform to our telco members, whereby they can then launch their CPA service to the enterprise customer. So having a common cloud platform, it enable the telcos to have a regional platform that can serve the enterprise customer. So that has been launched uh, in the last uh, 18 months and we see very good tractions in the area where enterprises uh, serve their employees doing remote work and distributed workforce, where CPAS becomes very important right, for communication needs. So that is uh, uh, an opportunity that actually arises and uh, in a way is, uh, is speed up the process and the time frame that we need to go to market. So yes, uh, pandemic is um, definitely posing a lot of challenges, but it does open up some opportunities and accelerated the path of digitalization. We've spoken about the last couple of years, but what are some focus areas for the years ahead? So uh, we can, in the telco world, you always hear 5G. <laughs> so 5G has started the journey. The telcos have started the journey in 5G, rolling out since 2019. Uh, across the region. And we are seeing more markets uh, lighting up their 5G network in this part of the world. So those who have started a journey, uh, in fact, uh, we started our task force, pulling the telcos to come together to look at how we can then uh, collaborate across the region in terms of 5G, whether for consumer, looking for more interesting and engaging AR, VR kind of uh, application to drive consumer adoption of 5G and to really bring the value of 5G through those uh, differentiated application and contents. On the B2B front, we are also having a task force where the operators are driving in terms of common solutions that can serve MNCs across this part of the world in smart factory, in built environment and more, right? So 5G definitely is a key focus in both B2B and B2C area. We have also come together to develop the early prototype or pilot uh, model of our federated edge hub. So in the 5G world, as you know, edge computing is going to be important. The telcos are rolling out their edge compute resources. And in order to serve the need of MNC or application providers who would like to actually seamlessly roll out the application across telco edge uh, in different markets, that's why Bridge Alliance feel that there's a, really a need to develop a federated edge hub that can orchestrate all this uh, requirement, right? In discovering, provisioning, and deploying application on telco edge. So that's something that we've started. We finished our POC last year. And in fact, now working very closely with GSMA, uh, Telecom Edge uh, Cloud Forum, in doing hub-to-hub -hub integration. So in future, uh, if there's a, an application provider in Europe where it's already rolled out across Europe and now want to come to Asia, they can do this hub-to-hub -hub integration uh, where Bridge Alliance can then be the conduit to bring the application across our market. So 5G, federated edge hub to enable the edge computing uh, value proposition. Those are key areas. I mentioned about CPaaS, which is part of digitalization uh, to enable the needs of our enterprises as they go through their digital transformation. That will continue to grow in importance. And I strongly believe that telco has a key part to play in that area, right? So there are more things that telcos can expose through APIs, network APIs where the world of application providers can 
consume and deliver more value along that journey. And Lazaro? You know, what a strategic plan. We have like two, you know, it's like a house. So we have the ceiling and the basement. So for us, the ceiling is customers. You know, that is something that we do. It's customers first. And it is going to continue to be our focus. So we are, you know, since three years, every strategic move, whatever it is on partnership, technology, products, we are consulting our customer advisory board to, to get their inputs and to drive the duration. So the ceiling is going to be always customers. The basement is going to be, you know, excellence in quality and delivery. We are an operational sales driving and customer driving entity. So that is going to be the two parts of our house, I would say. And then the next year, and it is a race, you know, a race that we started already, has three main pillars. Those three main pillars are, are rather similar to, to what the Bridge Alliance was commenting. And the first one is about automation of the business processes. We are investing right now, the four members of Freemove and its partners are investing together in building up an API hub, you know, where we are going to be able to connect uh, customers through our members and to get seamless access to all the interactions from their ITSM, you know, uh, product in the customer premises to all the national operators from the Free Move Alliance. You know, so we are building the highways, we are building the connectors, we are building a hub, which is obviously cloudified and, and so on, that is going to be able, is going to enable our members to sell their products easier, faster, seamless, and to give a value added to the customers through Freemove and enabled by Freemove, because Freemove is going to connect everyone through this hub. And from this API hub, you can imagine that we can talk about many other processes in the future. So, so far we have started by the business processes, everything which is, you know, incident management, ordering, uh, modification, et cetera, on a seamless manner. Because one thing that we heard from our customers was, you know what, I'm centralizing, but I am not fully centralized. I don't want to do locally what I do centrally. I need to have this coordination, but I have, digitalization projects, you know, where I want to serve my employees directly on an easier manner, faster, seamless, no, you know, no people, uh, at least in front. So this is the direction that we would like to take and that we have taken. We started the project last year. We have already invested a, a good chunk of money uh, with an, you know, external uh, provider. We're going to be in the cloud and we hope to deliver our first, uh, you know, uh, real, uh, real customer uh, in kind of the first, you know, uh, pilot customer, I would say, uh, by the mid of this year, something like this. Um, the second point, uh, as uh, you know, uh, Chio uh, was commenting is about 5G. You know, we are now focusing ourselves into the 5G, you know, uh, um, Freemove is uh, one of the best platforms to promote the coordination among our members you know we want to use this year to really you know have some uh, working groups dedicated to see how we can promote those best practices uh, how we can develop new business opportunities together how we can embrace this 5g inside the alliance thinking that we are not a network alliance we are much more a commercial alliance and then we you know, we see different areas where we coordinate. So the second pillar is going to be about the 5G, very much in line to what Bridge Alliance was, was commenting and, and, and perhaps not going so much further in some parts. In other ones, we could go a bit further. And the third pillar is going to be about footprint. You know, uh, we are today in around 100 plus countries uh, that we can work together and coordinate and support we think that there are two main opportunities for the future uh, and one is of course america when you look into america you see now that that frame was eminently a european dna alliance but you know there is a little thing of uh, a small country in america called usa with more than 300 million people and with a fantastic operator called t-mobile that has invested 
tons of money to have the best 5G network and has now created a B2B unit, you know, with a, with a lot of new people arriving, with a lot of knowledge about the B2B. And we are growing in the US at a very high pace. We are growing in the MNC segment thanks to T-Mobile US. And we believe that this is an opportunity. We would like to reinforce our position in America. And of course, America could be North America and could be South America. So we are focusing into extending our footprint there. And of course, in our strategic plan is to strengthen the relation with rich alliance in APAC. We know that this is, this is a cherry on the cake. We have access to APAC thanks to, thanks to them. We don't share any kind of revenues, but we are sharing best practices, etc. I think that we should reinforce our relation in certain countries where our customers are very much more interested. So three topics, automation, 5G, footprint. And of course, the ceiling and the basement for us, customers and delivery. Thanks, Lazaro. And, and thank you, Georg. It's really been great to talk to you both about this really important topic. And thank you very much for your time.